Hello world and welcome to the Yacht Report. Today I want to talk about why is Maya Angelou on the back of a quarter? As a matter of fact, I, I well, I do want to know why she's on the back of a quarter, but also what's the point of continual continuing to change the back of the quarter instead of just changing the quarter completely? Like for instance, Okay, you put the picture on the back of the quarter. It normally, I because I, I just thought about this. I didn't, it, that's not even something that was originally in my discussion when talking about why is Maya Angelou on the back of a quarter. Because originally, what I, now that I'm thinking about it is why can't we, George Washington is already on the front of the dollar bill. He's on the quarter and he's also on the back of the $2 bill. I just realized today because there's also someone else on the back of the $2 bill that if you blink, you'll miss them. Uh, I mean, listen, I, I had to, you know, look up some things to make sure that everything was on the up and up before I came out to talk about what we're here to talk about today, which is out of all the people to put on the back of a quarter or to put on currency anyway, you chose Maya Angelou. Now, I would like to know what was the criteria on who's chosen or why or why not they're chosen to be on any um, American currency that is in circulation. But the main part is out of all the people in the African-American community, you chose Maya Angelou. We have so many other, uh, how do I put this? So many other accomplished um, African-American women in our community that you could have cho chosen or pulled from. Most notably, off the top of my head, I mean, uh, why didn't you put um, Harriet Tubman on the back of the quarter? But wait, there is a problem. Harriet Tubman is supposed to be on the front of the $20 bill. And we'll, we'll get into that later. And even with Harriet Tubman uh, being selected to go on the $20 bill, I have no problem with that because actually Harriet Tubman's um, works predates uh, Martin and Malcolm. So in that case, I, I, I can back Harriet Tubman uh, being on the front of the $20 bill because who else is there to put on the $20 bill uh, around the time Harriet Tubman did what it was that she did because she actually did her thing during the time of slavery, as we're told. But we're also told the first black president is supposed to be somebody by the name of uh, John Hanson. And this is the gentleman that is on the back of the uh, $2 bill. Like I said, I seen the back of that $2 bill and just by looking at that $2 bill, I, the symbolism, a lot of things you're going to hear me say today is about symbolism, what it represents. What are you trying to say? What are they trying to say? What is it supposed to mean to us and for us? And a lot of these symbolisms that I'm finding connections to, I'm actually not liking. Like, for instance, you decide to put an African-American female on the back of a quarter. And as a matter of fact, this will be the first African-American female that is placed on the back of a quarter. Again, I have no issue with a female or African-American female being on the quarter. All I ask is, why not Markham? Why not Martin? And why not Malcolm? Even when it comes to dollar bills, you're putting Harriet Tugman on the dollar bill. I mean, on the twenty dollar bill. I, like I said, I don't have an issue with that per se. I'm talking about the symbolism still. On all of America's currency, the only people you will find on their uh, paper money. And the first ones you saw were uh, Caucasian men. And now that you want to add some other people on to the currency, you, you know, I, I've learned that Helen Keller has um, been.
been on paper currency, but it was for a short time. Um, and I, th I believe on a quarter, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know if that was in circulation. Please don't quote me on that. You can look it up and do your research yourself, because, again, this is not about their community. This is about the African-American community and the continual disrespect that we continue to receive, because this right here would do nothing but further divide the problem that we already have in the African-American community between the males and females of that community. For instance, we love our women, and even those who don't fall for the Kool-Aid that uh, social media is trying to push on them even know that the man comes first. And as we can see from uh, living in our community and how things happen in our community, the crime in our community, we understand the importance of having the proper structure like you have in your community. Because the things, it seems like the things that we ask for, we never get, but we always get something else that, it's like we get the consolation prize, but never actually what it is that we wanted. You know, it's like you wanted an ice cream cake, but your mother bought you uh, just an ice cream in a carton and a candle on it. That's not ice cream cake. That's just, Ice cream in a carton with a candle on it. But hey, yeah, don't mind me. That didn't make sense. So what? But this also doesn't make sense. But I've never really like looked at them, looked at them. But today was my first day actually looking at the $2 bill. If you don't have your own $2 bill, I will have a link in the description to an article that, you know, speaks more on the $2 bill, John Hansen and... You can actually see what the two the back of the two dollar bill looks like. But here's the, here's the thing: if you look on the back of the two dollar bill, John Hansen, if you blink, you will miss him. I seen John Hansen, you know, with the red circle on it from the article that I'm telling you about. But like I said, I went up up and looked at my uh, two dollar bill that I had, and I missed him until I had to really focus, and and then I was able to zoom in on him. The problem that I have here is the symbolism behind who they say or claim he's supposed to be to the african-american community like i said he's supposed to be allegedly the first uh black president who's supposed to predate um george washington and which it, it, why i bring that up is because if you look on the back of the two dollar bill in the foreground you will see george washington sitting at a table with another Caucasian man in front of him, handing him some paperwork where other Caucasians are to the right of him doing some things, but those are the only ones at the table. If you look in the back or like in, in their, I used to call like congregation where everybody else is seated, like all the others are seated inside this meeting, but you see the separation in there. You will see John Hansen sitting with, surrounded by other Caucasians. If you ask me, it looked like he's being hemmed up and they are stealing America from him. But hey, that's just my opinion. But by the way that it looks on the back of the $2 bill, it looks like they stole America from John Hansen. Things that continue to go on to this day. But I digress. The reason why I say about the symbolism, like I said, they're telling us now, or you hear rumblings of John Hansen is supposed to be the first african-american president of the united states of america but the symbolism is saying yes we acknowledge you we know you're here yeah you, 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 you can come in you can come and chill with us but you just can't sit at the table you got to sit back there but you just can't sit at the table and they also love to give us treats like i said that we didn't ask for because i mean we asked for equal rights which as I've said and will continue to say, the equality is a joke. There's no such thing as equality. And the reason why is because none of us are equal. No matter how they try to say that we all are equal, we are not equal. And as we can see, just by turning on our TVs, listening to the news, there is no equality nowhere. Because if there were, we all 
would be able to say what we feel and what we believe about certain things that now, if you don't say what they want you to say or what they believe, then you get treated unfairly. So how, where's the equality in that? Equality to me is, um, how can I put this? Equality is for people who live in a land of make-believe, who actually believe that, you know, you can actually be equal with your enemy, which I don't understand how anyone would think that because none of us are. If you want to understand what I mean by equality is a joke and equality isn't real, all you have to do is first look at yourself next look at your brothers and sisters and then think about how your parents treat you all if you're honest with yourself and if you're a parent and you're honest with yourself then you will say i don't treat my children equally because there are parents who love that that line that says oh i treat all my kids equally everybody gets treated equally but it's a lie it sounds good to say we want to believe that it's possible but it's impossible because the needs that i have is not the needs of my brothers and sisters the needs that i have is not the needs of my cousins the needs that i have are not the needs of my friends or my neighbors, we all have different needs. Yes, there are some things that overlap that may be similar, but overall, we're all different. We all need to be treated differently because we all have different needs. And that is the reason why we're having another problem we have in today is because people know what you're good at, know what you're qualified for, but people now in these days want to operate outside of their pay grade. It's like, you're not a police officer, but you want to tell a police officer how to do their job. How does that work? But as I say, like I said, uh, equality is a joke. Everybody needs to be treated fairly. And all we wanted was an apology for what was done to us. Uh, we asked for equal, equal rights. That's what Mark, Martin Luther King asked for, equal rights. I mean, they were confused back then. They tried to get what they can get. And to be treated fairly which i would just like to be treated fairly given the same fair chance as everyone else to just show and prove what i can do before being rejected because of the color of my skin because let's just be honest here let's be truthful who is black who is white what is black what is white race is meaningless race is pointless Race only distinguishes us and separates us by the color of our skin. Because like I said, is an Asian black or white? Is a Hispanic black or white? Is a Puerto Rican black or white? Is an Italian black or white? Do you see where I'm going with this? Is Indians black or white? Are the people in the Middle East black or white? I would like to know what actually is black and what actually is white. Because from my understanding of all of this, black and white is only the color of your skin. Because the last time I checked, what do you call a dark-skinned Puerto Rican? Is he black or is he just a dark-skinned Puerto Rican? What do you call a dark-skinned Dominican? Are they black? Are they a dark-skinned Dominican? What do you call a dark-skinned Indian? Are they black or are they just a dark-skinned Indian? And when I say Indian, I don't mean Native Americans here in America. I mean those Indians over there in India. I'm just asking a question because I'm curious of what is black and what is white. We ask for reparations and you give us a holiday in June, Juneteenth. In the same year, time, month, you gave the LGBT the entire month of June. 
Oh, what also was in the month of June before Juneteenth got there and before the LGBTQ took it for a whole month. Also before they had their parade in that month, it was Father's Day. We celebrate Father's Day in June. Father's Day. Like I said, all about symbolism. What is it that they've been trying to tell the fathers, the men, and the African-American community forever? They don't care about us. Why do I say this? They place the LGBT above the fathers and while they were at it above the African-Americans. Why do I say this? Well, I know you gave African Americans Black History Month or whatever, because uh, I haven't seen Black History Month being studied uh, since the turn of the millennium. I don't think any of the later half of the millennials or Gen Z even knows what Black History Month actually is. Because we don't see anything about Black History Month anymore or learn anything about Black history. We have to go out and do it ourselves, which is not a bad thing. We need to learn it ourselves. That's the reason why I started to notice and see things and ask questions like, some of this stuff just ain't making no sense. But like I said, it is what it is. But now, I've also asked, I had asked what this, um, the fact up about how the LGBT uh, was given June, which is the month of Juneteenth and also, you know, Father's Day. And I was talking to a female friend about it. And, you know, like many other females, she said, oh, who cares? It's just a day. Who cares? Fathers care. That's who care. We don't ask for much. We don't ask for much. But we just one day out the year to be for fathers to be honored. Children, mothers, wives, girlfriends, side pieces, jump offs. Y'all get 364 days of the year. We just want one and we can't even have that one. But let us say we were going to, you know, give Mother's Day to someone else or overshadow Mother's Day with a bunch of BS garbage. Oh, mothers and women's will have a heart attack. But fellas, hey, we got to sit back, take it in and, and, and not say anything. Everything they do has a deeper meaning. And my assumptions were confirmed by Forbes, by Forbes. Art. I came across when I started looking into this story, because like I said, I was not mad so much at uh, Maya Angelou was given the honor of being on the back of the quarter. My problem here, it was, I just wanted to know why did you pick an African-American female first before the male? And this article by, uh, that I found that Forbes had did, um, and it was, it was, it was back on uh, January 11th this month. I will also have that linked in the, in the comments below. I mean, in the um, description below, it talks about, Again, if it's, and even in that article, it, it talked about symbolism and, and, you know, and what are they trying to tell us and tell our children? Because the symbolism in this is, I know Maya Angelou's story, because like I said, I don't know if these children in this generation know. I don't know if the later half of millenniums even know. But me, when I was in elementary and middle school and high school, we learned about black history. We had to do research papers on black history. We, they also showed movies on what they want to call black history, which again, I don't like the word black. We are African-American or American. We can choose either one. It's up to us, but black, uh -uh. I refuse to call myself a nigga on the low. Um, but anyway, like I said, so I know Maya Angelou, when she started out, Maya Angelou wasn't who she was, ended up to be. Maya Angelou started out as, I guess, a call girl, prostitute, whatever you want to call it, while also at the same time, she got married to a white man. I digress. But this generation of females also mirror Maya Angelou, if you really think about it. Why? Because, uh, their reformed 
there are there are reform maybe strippers call girls on social media who degrade themselves on social media on reality TV shows for money and fame and when things don't go their way when things don't work out or when the light starts to dim then they want to cause drama and want to blame a man for their shortcomings when boo boo we've been watching you for the longest we've been seeing how you've been moving we've been seeing how you for a bag as y'all would like to say you'll keep pushing this agenda of separation pushing the agenda of a man is not needed pushing the agenda of a relationship is not needed pushing the agenda of a broken home broken people degree in women for fame and all the while if you really think about it I only see this from my women. They don't push their women like this. They only push my women. And we accept it. And we allow our children to accept it. And then we wonder why we have another generation of strippers and gangbangers. Because of, like I said, the symbolism. So let me get into uh, this, this Forbes article. January the 10th is when, you know, the U.S. Mint announced that they will be releasing um, five quarters per year to celebrate distinguished American women. And the funny thing is, this will be the only time that they ever refer to African-Americans as just American when they want to group all others in to one pot is the only time that we get a semblance of respect, but we still don't get the proper respect that we deserve. As I stated, Maya Angelou has become the first black woman to have her likeness depicted on a quarter. Now, a quote directly from Forbes.com. They say it's about time. Women have long been absent from U.S. currency, and, and this absence sends a strong message to children about who can be a leader. Remember when I said symbolism? Remember when I said what are they trying to tell us? What are they trying to tell our children? If women being absent from the currency sends a strong message to children about who can be a leader, what happened to the African-American male representative? Where is ours? And don't try to slide in... Um, Obama, because it's not going to work. Obama was a person of color president. And again, while I would have to break it down for you to understand, I respect Obama for what he did and his accomplishments. But we're going to call a spade a spade. And let's be honest here. Obama's mother is white. Obama's father is an African from Kenya. Obama does not have the same struggle that we have historically. What do I mean? Obama is not a descendant of slavery. He may be a descendant of a slave master, but not a descendant of slavery. He may be a descendant of one of those Africans who sold us into slavery, but he's not a descendant of the slave here in these United States of America. So that doesn't count. Maybe for persons of color, maybe for an uh, African born in the 20th century, 21st century, came to America, had children, and then grew up to become president. Yes, he inspires them. He doesn't inspire me. Because I still need to see someone maybe who came from the same place that I've come from experienced the same things that i experienced which is like i said the symbolism but also what was the criteria for these other women to be placed on the back of the quarter which to me if you're going to put these women on the quarter i would have rather you put their portrait like george washington on the front of the quarter and on the back of the quarter you should have put what these women are on the quarter for you know like on the front of the quarter george washington in the back of the quarter you had 50 states like 
on the front of the quarter you have these women on the back of the quarter you have like a writer or something that represents a writer and a poet that you gave Maya Angelou for her to be on the back of the quarter after looking at the resume of these other women I vote Mary McLeod Bethune should have been on the back of this quarter and I'll explain why when I get there so you have Maya Angelou who represents a writer and a poet and reformed prostitute we're not going to leave that out who also married a Caucasian while being pro-black. I don't understand how that works, but hey, <laughs> this is the things that we got to put up with. The next woman is uh, Dr. Sally Rod, the first American woman in space, writer and poet, first American woman in space. Third woman, Wilma Mankiller symbolism that's all i'm going to say the first female principal chief of the cherokee nation i have nothing to say about that next number four nina otaro warren a leader in new mexico suffrage movement maya angelou writer and poet Nina Otaro Warren, a leader in the New Mexico's suffrage movement. Hmm. Okay. So we have a first woman in space. We have uh, the first female principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. You know, the first of something real woman in space first or something real something something meaningful as being the first female principal chief of the cherokee nation something meaningful a leader in the new mexico suffrage movement something meaningful and the last one is anna may wong the first chinese american movie star i see first 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 Oh, well, three firsts and a leader. What is Maya Angelou first at or a leader of? Absolutely nothing. But if we want to do symbolism and we want to talk about what is it that Maya Angelou represents the first of, well, I don't want to call out names. Anybody with common sense, anybody who's smart, anybody who does research on or look into or follow their favorite rappers, favorite rappers, especially these new rappers, especially these rappers back in the day, because I'm going to I'm going to tell you. We had a female female rappers back in the. Uh, late 90s, 2000s. Early 2000s who were stripper former strippers and things like that but you want to know what the difference is between them ladies then and these ladies now them ladies then moved so far away from it they also didn't look like it they also didn't push it they also didn't support it they supported uplifting women for women to have receive and get respect by doing something like these women right here like again maya angelou is a reformed i respect that she's a writer and then she became a writer and a poet you have these other women who was the first woman in space uh you know a chief of the cherokee nation you know a leader of a movement in new mexico and the first uh a chinese american movie star you see these things and these are something to be celebrated but ask me honestly these female entertainers now not all of them but the ones that are being pushed down our throats came straight from but well, i can't even say they came straight from because i don't know if they came straight from they left or they're still there because they still look like they're there and you're bringing all of these young girls now, the symbolism, you're turning a whole generation of females into
deleting a whole generation of females down the wrong path. We're supposed to be building our community, building a better future. But yet we continue to fall for the okie doke Like I said, I believe the women, if you're going to put them on the quarter, put them on the quarter. Don't just half-ass it. Put them, put, just put them on the quarter. And when Obama was in office, you know, this, this is, look, the decision was made to replace Andrew Jackson's picture on the $20 bill for Harriet Tubman. I don't know what took so long because, like I said, Obama, I don't know at what point even when Obama was in office, because Obama was in there for eight years. So from the whole time Obama was in there, whenever they decided to make this, you know, decision, by the time Trump come in, all of a sudden it gets halted. I don't know why or who was responsible. Don't know. Not going to blame anyone because I don't know. What I do know is. Now we're not going to see the first Tubman $20 bill until 2030. But yet we're going to see these quarters faster. Why? Well, the reason why is because Harriet is going to be on the front of the $20 bill all by herself on the front and not the back. That's the problem. That's the real issue here. Because it's okay to put anyone on the back of the quarter. Like, I mean, to be honest with you, even after me going through this, I really don't care about who's on the back of the quarter because it's, again, the symbolism. You got Washington on the front and you got these five women on the back. I'll let you run with that however you want to run with it because, again, I'm only here uh, to talk to my people to understand there is something wrong with this picture. Like I said... We're going to have, again, instead of an African-American man, like, okay, if John Hanson was supposed to be the first African-American um, president, why hasn't he been placed on the dollar, on uh, any legal currency that's in circulation to be used to buy and sell? But yet, we have George Washington on the $1 bill in the quarter. Abraham Lincoln on the five, Alexander Hamilton on the 10, Andrew Jackson on the 20, Ulysses X. Grant on the 50, and Benjamin Franklin on the 100. Something else that I found interesting the reason why I said what about the african-american what about malcolm and martin martin why isn't martin luther king or malcolm x on any currency i would vote for them before i would have voted for maya angelou because i would just like to know why is she on the back of the quarter poet and writer is not enough not when anyone can go and look at her history. That's not enough. Mary McLeod Bethune should have been on the back of the quarter. She should also be on legal currency. I would have voted for her. Maya Angelou, no, and this is why. The faces we see on our currency has a real impact on how we think about men and women and about ourselves. Again, when I say the symbolism, because they are correct. We don't see an African-American man, male, anywhere on any currency. The faces we see on our currency has a real impact on how we think about men and women and about ourselves. I'm going to let common sense 
guide you through that one. It says, social psychologists believe that children and adults have mental structures called ginger schisms that we use to organize incoming information according to gender categories. These ginger schisms also help us figure out what behavior is appropriate for our, for our own gender. Little children start using incoming information to, inf to form ginger, ginger, gender schisms at a very young age. The message kids get from our currency is that leaders are white men, so a child's gender schism for men would include leadership. Again, let's go back to what I said about symbolism. Like I said, this Forbes article basically explained and broke down everything that I already assumed and believe surrounding this whole thing. There is no conspiracy. This is blatant. Why do I say this? The message kids get from our currency is that leaders are white men. So a child's gender schism for men and in, would include leadership. In a nutshell, again, do I have to spell it out to you or just leave you with this question? Where are the African-American men? They say children internalize information when they reach school age. Gender becomes most powerful predictor of their occupational aspirations. Okay. I'm with you on that. They say young girls often aspire to careers that require grace, such as ballerina or helping careers such as veterinarians or teacher. The adage, you need to see it to be it. Young girls often aspire to careers that require grace, such as ballerina and helping careers, such as veterinarians or teacher. I would like to know where this came from, because if I when I go on social media, all I see is the opposite of this. I don't see them aspiring to be ballerinas or helping careers and veterinarians. No, those young girls, y'all push to the wayside, y'all push to the back. Y'all bully. The ones that I see that is being inspired by those who are inspired by those who are inspired by these reformed strippers, maybe call girls. I don't, I don't, I don't know social media. I don't know what you want to call them. They say, um, Altering career aspirations, positive female role models can change the way we think about women. Well, if you start giving us those, maybe it can change because right now you're giving us reformed prostitute strippers, call girls, I don't know. They said they did a study with um, exposing female students to, you know, famous, to women who are, who are famous for their contributions in science, law, and politics, and were less likely to hold stereotypical beliefs about women. It says uh, a, a few months ago, Biden released the country's first ever national strategy to achieve gender equity and equality. Like I said, we already know if make believe race equality is fake gender equality is fake because now you're destroying what gender actually is and everything that we used to know everything we used to believe is now being called into question what is it what is race what is gender what is a relationship what is marriage what is anything Everything is being destroyed. Everything. 
It said, often the gender bias that is the most blatant that we see every day like that on our currency goes unnoticed. Often the racial bias, often the ethnic bias, often the religious bias, often the geographical bias, often the financial bias that we that is the most blatant that we see every day like that on our currency goes unnoticed like i said i will have a link down in the description To this article that was written by Forbes and to um, where you can see the uh, the back of the two dollar bill in case you don't have one of your own and I will say this I have no issue with any group or person that I discussed here in today's arc report my only purpose in this was to ask the question of why not mark why not martin why not malcolm mary mcleod bethune rosa parks anyone else whose background was not that shady or anyone else who would fit nicely in this group of women right here. Maya Angelou, I'm sorry, is not it. The other part is, I need you all to go and look at the back of that quarter that they're calling Maya Angelou. The only thing on the back of that quarter that is Maya Angelou is the name Maya Angelou. Because that woman that's on that quarter is not Maya Angelou. I don't know who they think that is, but I know who it ain't. Maya Angelou. I would just say to my people, to the activists, civil rights leaders, I know, we know, you know, we're not black. Black is a damn color. Let's cut the bullshit. Stop taking pride in something that is cursing us and start. We need to find something that we can all agree on that uplifts us and put pride within us because black pride is not it i'm not black my shirt is black my hat headphones mic background that is black i'm brown sometimes a dark brown sometimes a dark brown reddish brown chocolate but i'm brown not black my eyebrows are black my eyelashes black mustache bleared black i'm the complexion of my eyes when you describe me and you describe my eyes you would say i have brown eyes my complexion matches my eyes depending on the wind, how the light hits it, maybe a little darker or lighter, who knows? Neither here nor there. The point is, I need for my African-American historians to really go out and find our nationality so we can start to fix what is going on here. Because until we have a country, a nation to back us, well, My name is Akish Akhlord Mullins. This is the Ak Report. What say you? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Have a nice day, everybody.